Center for the Ethiopian Educational Information and Communication Technology presents Educational Satellite Television Programs. Hello students, I'm Gebre from Intellectual Schools International Branch. Uh, this is chemistry for grade 12 revision. Uh, we will start from grade 11, so this is our first lesson. It's about the fundamental concepts of chemistry. In this lesson we are going to see application of chemistry in daily life, physical change, chemical change, the scope of chemistry. So let us start. So now we are going to see the application of chemistry in daily life. Once upon a time, one of the scientists said that hearing, seeing, testing, and touching, all, they involve interaction with our body. So this means everything we do is a part of chemistry or a part of chemical reactions. So let us see the applications the first one is like the digestion of food, soaps we use, the detergents, toothpaste are products of chemistry, uh, drugs or medicines, even in engineering the apparatus we use they are made up of chemistry, they are made up of chemistry. In agriculture chemistry is very important. Why? Because in agriculture usually we use fertilizers, herbicides, pesticides. So these are the product of chemistry. So chemistry plays a huge role in the agriculture science. Uh, the other way we use it for example clothes, clothes, the products in the production of clothes always we use uh, chemical products. Cosmetics and construction materials also are parts of the chemical or chemistry products. So easily we can say that, easily we can say that chemistry involved in everything we need. Chemistry is everywhere. Okay, and now let us see the scope of chemistry. Let us see the scope of chemistry. You know, chemistry it has a huge or a big difference. It makes a big difference in the world. So let us define it what chemistry is first. Yeah, chemistry is the scientific discipline involved with elements and compounds which related with their composition, structure, properties, behaviors, and changes they undergo during a reaction with other substances. So this chemistry we usually classified into five main branches. The first one is analytic chemistry. Analytic chemistry is a branch of chemistry that studies and uses instruments and methods used to separate, identify, and quantify matters. Analytic chemistry involves the analysis of chemicals and including qualitative methods. So this analytic chemistry most of the time is related with qualitative methods. Okay, the second branch is physical chemistry. This branch of chemistry, it studies the macroscopic and particulate phenomena in chemical system in terms of principles, practices, and concepts. Physical chemistry deals with the physical structure of compounds, or the physical structure of compounds, the way they react with other matter and the bond that hold their atoms together. The third part of chemistry, or the third branch of chemistry is biochemistry. This branch of chemistry mainly it studies the chemical process within relating to living organisms. This biochemistry 
Masters of Time, it is laboratory based science. It brings together like biology and chemistry. As you can see from the name, there is biochemistry. So there is a combination of biology and chemistry. It's not only about living things. Sometimes it's also, uh, it can uh, be done with non-living things. Uh, especially in this time, this biochemistry is really famous. Uh, we are using uh, the nanotechnology. So biochemistry is very important branch of chemistry. Yes, the fourth branch of chemistry is inorganic chemistry. This inorganic chemistry, most of the time, it deals with behavior of inorganic and organometallic compounds. It is typically a chemical compound that lacks carbon-hydrogen bonds. We call them non-carbon compounds. Of course, there is a specialty. For example, compounds such as carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, and carbonates compounds are under inorganic compounds. The fifth one is organic chemistry. When you say organic chemistry, most of the time, this branch of chemistry studies carbon compounds, or it studies compounds that have carbon and hydrogen bonds. So organic compounds are generally any chemical compound that contains carbon hydrogen bonds. Organic chemistry is very important in the formation of medicines fuels for the transportation we use. So organic chemistry always, it should have the compound related with carbon and hydrogen. So that's how we classify chemistry into main branch. And in this topic, in this topic, we are going to see also the changes. You know, changes normally, we classify them into two main branches, that is chemical change and physical change. When you say chemical change, this means the change always there is a formation of new substance. Chemical changes occur when a substance combines with another to form a new substance. This means in a chemical process or in a chemical change, always there should be formation of new substance. If there is formation of new substance, this means there is formation of new composition, new structures. So at that time, then we say this one have changed or occurred chemical change. And these chemical changes they are irreversible. They are irreversible. OK, so can you give me examples of chemical change? burning of wood, storing of milk, mixing of acid Swiss base, what you call it neutralization, or any kind of chemical reactions, digestion of food, resting of iron are examples of chemical changes. Okay, the second change is physical change. When we say physical change, it means the change are affecting only and only the form of a chemical substance. But they are not affecting the composition of the chemicals. Physical changes are used to separate mixtures into their components. When we went to separate any compound, then it's better to use their physical properties. But if you use chemical properties, they may have the same chemical property. But physical property, always it is unique for every matter. So always, if you want to separate mixtures, it's better to use their physical properties. Please, can you give me examples of physical properties? Melting, boiling, mixing, breaking, tearing, shredding, and chopping 
of any substance can be example of physical changes. In the physical change, there are two types of properties, extensive property and intensive property. OK, what are extensive properties? When you say extensive properties, we mean it's the properties that depend on the amount of matter being measured. They are dependable on the measurements. For example, thickness, mass, electric resistivity, pressure are examples of extensive properties. The second physical property is intensive property. When you say intensive property, these kind of properties, they don't depend on the amount of the substance measurement. For example, let us see boiling point. Boiling point of one liter of water and 500 milliliter of water, they are the same. Even five milliliter of water is going to have the same boiling point. So boiling point, density, state of matter, uh, melting point, order, and temperature, always they are going to be the same. It doesn't matter of their measurement or the size. So this is how we explain intensive properties. So here there is one important point, always Intensive properties are very useful to distinguish between different substances because we know that these compounds, they are the same. They don't vary from sample to sample. Always, intensive properties, they are the same. Independent of their place, their time, or the environment they use. So always, intensive properties are useful to distinguish between different substances. Uh, always in chemistry, when we are doing the measurements, uh, we are going to use the SI units. But some of the measurements, they might be too huge or they might be too small. So we have to use prefixes. So these are examples of our prefixes. For example, there is giga, which means 10 to the power of 9. We have mega, which is 10 to the power of 6. We have kilo, which means 10 to the power of 3 or 1,000. We have DC, which means 10 to the power of minus 1. We have centi, which means 10 to the power of minus 2. We have milli, which means 10 to the power of minus 3. We have micro, which means 10 to the power of minus 6. We have nano, which means 10 to the power of minus 9, and so on. And sometimes we may need to convert the prefixes. So here we use a systematic order, we call it conversion of factor. So conversion of factor is a number used to change one set of unit to another one. Maybe it's by multiplying or dividing. For example, let us convert 12 nanogram into milligram. Okay, before we convert, first we have to see what does it mean nanogram. We say that a nanogram means 10 to the power of minus 9 gram. Milligram means 10 to the power of minus 3. So the difference is 10 to the power of 6. The difference is 10 to the power of 6. Their difference is almost 1 million. So now we are going to convert 12 nanogram to milligram, which means from the smallest one, we are going to convert it into the greatest number or to the a greatest unit. So this is what we are going to do. 12 times 10 to the power of minus 9. Then this one, we are going to convert it into, my, to, into milligram. So what we are going to do is we are going to multiply 1 over 10 to the power of minus 3. So then we are going to get 12 times 10 to the power of 6. This means in 12 nanogram, actually, we have 12 million of milligrams. OK. So can you try number 2 and the number 3, please?
Okay, while we are doing measurements, while we are doing measurements, uh, there is always a formation of mistakes. There is a mistake or error. So this one, we call them that there is uncertainty in the measurements. This uncertainty in measurements can be caused because of many problems. So the major causes of these uncertainties are the person doing the experiments, the measuring devices, the environment, maybe the temperature, maybe the pressure, the volume, the air by itself can be a problem or can be a cause. The variability in items being measured, also they may cause this uncertainty. We are about to finish, so I want you to remember or to think what we just saw today. Okay, today we saw the scope of chemistry. We say that chemistry can be classified into five main branches, physical chemistry, biochemistry, analytic chemistry, organic chemistry, and inorganic chemistry. We saw prefixes, we saw and we explain chemistry Dear students, that's all for today. See you in the next lesson.